on the NLA strips, we are going to use the animated strip time property of each strip. So you can go ahead in your animation library and on each strip, you can enable animated strip time. Unfortunately, this isn't really real time and you can't even control it with drivers. You can actually hack it to have a driver, but it really doesn't work. So we are going to write a short script to take value from a geometry setup and automatically add keyframes to each of those values. So the first step is to compute those values with the geometry node setup. Add a new object in the simulation collection and call it O2 strip time because this will also use some simulation zones. Add a new geometry node setup and call it compute strip time. Now first we want to fetch the information from the terrain as usual with a simple index and named attribute we want to fetch the state. Then we will blend between different values with the state value blend. And here from the geometry node setup, I actually want to output a single value. So instead of having five different keyframe values for each of the animation, I will have just a factor between zero and one, which will be the same for all the strips and which will be mapped by the script to take the right frame in the animations. Add the store named attribute node, which I'm going to call anim underscore factor. And for the different values of the state value blend, because we want a factor of between 0 and 1 instead of the frame range. For example, if the first animation of work heavy has 43 frames, we want this to output a value of 1 over 43, which will be the minimal factor per frame we can have. So add some math node set to divide, put 1 in the first input, and on second the duration of each animation. So the first one has 43 frames, then 32, 26, 22, and 20. Then you can plug everything in the different values. And because we are adjusting the state value in real time, we want to add a simulation zone. So at each frame, we will add a small value, which is actually the output from our state value blend. So add the math operator, set to add, and we are going to add this value to something. So here, just set it like this. And this is actually the next animation factor. So if you also want the previous one, we just need to set this input into here. And this you can plug in into the store named attribute from before. If we check the values, we see that the animation factor is updating and increasing during the whole duration of the animation. But obviously, because we didn't set this as keyframes, the character isn't animating yet. So first, just to have this work visually, I just want to delete all the vertices but one. So select all here and press M, merge at center. And now let's get to scripting. Create a new script and call it animate strip time. Like all Python scripts inside Blender, we need to start by importing the Blender Python module. So type import bpy. Then, and that's why it was so important that we called everything with the same name, from the armature to the animation and the strips, we create a list of all the animation name so we can easily find all the objects with the same name. Now I'm going to initialize a list that will contain all the NLA strips. And let's iterate over the names in our list to fetch all those strips. First, we need to get all the armatures, which we can get by their name like this. And when we know the armature, the NLA strips is located in animation underscore data dot NLA tracks, which we can fetch by name. And the strip itself has also the same name. Now we can append this to our strips list. Now let's fetch the information from our geometry node setup from before. First, the object is located in bpy.data.objects with the name O2 strip time. And because the data is located inside the geometry node, we need to realize this object when we are running the script. To do that, we need to select this object. And then when we iterate frame by frame, we will realize the object with a simple function. So let's select this object by beginning by deselecting everything else. Then select the active object and set its state to selected. Now let's iterate over all the frames of our animation. First, we need to get the context of the scene so we can get the first and last frames of the animation. And to iterate over all the frame, we can make a for loop for frame in the range from the scene frame start to 
sin frame and and because of the range in Python is exclusive of the last value into add plus one, so we still get to the last frame of the animation. Then we can set the playhead to the current frame. And now we can realize the data of the object. So it's at this step that Blender will compute the data in our geometry node. So the object realized, we can get like this. We need to get the context of the object with an evaluated get function, which will target the context evaluated depth graph, which is the graph of dependencies and is actually a function. And of all that, we need the data. Then to get the attribute we created in the geometry node, let's take our realized object and inside attributes with the key anim factor, which is the name of the attribute we said before, we can get the data at the first index of the object because we only have a single vertex in our object, it doesn't really matter, and we want its value. We can print this to make sure it works, and to view that, you can go into our window and toggle the system console. So great, we have all our values. Let's remove this line and now apply this factor to our different NLA strips. So for strip in our strips list, we first need to get uh, the length of the strip. And to compute the strip time and also set it, we can type strip dot strip underscore time. We need to type strip length minus one because of the last frame of the strip is the same as the first one as the animation is looping. And we can scale that by the animation factor which we can make modulo 1, so the value is always between 0 and 1. And because the strip begins at frame 1 and not 0, we need to also add 1 here. And finally, we can set this as a keyframe, with the data path located at strip time, and the frame being the current frame. Let's test this. Now if you check in our animation library in animation mode, we see all the keyframes we added. And when viewing our animation, all the transitions are really fixed, just like we wanted. So it's looking really nice. If you had some trouble following this scripting stage and don't really want to work with this Python, I will make this script available on my GitHub at this address. Now we just need to remember to run this script before each render if you change any of the settings inside the terrain or strip time, which with this setup looks like this. So to sum up, at the end of the initial setup of every system we will have here, we have the terrain generation, which starts by generating two mesh, one for the collision and one with lower resolution for the slope. We instance this over a few number of chunks. We store a few attributes. Inside a simulation loop, we compute the slope at each point right under the character. And depending on the slope, we create different states for the five different animations and we convert them to five different speeds for the scrolling of the treadmill effect. With those, we compute at each frame the new position of everything and wrap the value so that each chunk which goes out of view goes back in front of the character. And we also compute the height with a noise texture which only affects the Z component of our mesh. Also, the different slope values and the states are smoothed by blending each new value with the previous one. And finally, for this setup, we offset everything on the z-axis, so everything is still centered right in the middle of our scene. Then on the character, we fetch the state value from the main terrain, which allows to edit the weight of five different vertex groups that are bound to the five different armature and their animations. This is what allows the character to switch between five different animations. And then because the five animations don't have all the same length and are not synchronized, we created this setup which compute a specific strip time factor between 0 and 1, depending on the state of the terrain and the length of each strip of animation. With this attribute, we wrote a really short Python script to automatically assign new keyframes to the animated NLA strips, which allows the smooth blending between all the animations. Also, from the attributes that were set into the main terrain, we can extract a single object for the mesh collision which allows the feet to always stamp on the ground, and a second object for the slope, which allows the smooth evolution of the Z component of our main character. And that's it for this part. Hope you learned something here. The next part will be focused on creating the environment itself with rock, soil, and grass. 
feel free to reach out to me if you have any question. Thank you for watching and see you next time.